And in addition to the X-Trails that have already been launched, now Nissan is bringing in the electrified Nissan X-Trail. First, the things that are the same between this and the normal TIL model. Uh, just out of interest, the electrified version is only in the top two models, the TI and the TIL. Adam Patterson, the boss of Nissan, didn't rule out this drivetrain going into the lower price cars. The top two models have adaptive LED lights, those matrix ones I'm always going on about. TI has 19 inch wheels, this TIL has 20 inch wheels. And this is where it starts to differ between the electrified and non-electrified versions, so the ICE versions. There's a motor here, there's a motor here, a battery here, a 2.1 kilowatt hour battery, an inverter there, and a petrol engine there. And that petrol engine never drives the wheels ever but it does occasionally provide direct power through the inverter to the wheels. And I'll talk about that when we're on the road. There's no transmission in this car because it's got electric motors and that's what makes this car different to the other hybrids. It does not have a transmission. It is in fact an electric car with a petrol engine. So you never have to plug it in. The 55 litre tank will give this a really good range. And chances are you'll get this to 6.1 or below around town. And all of these petrol electric cars are called e-power and that's the petrol electric bit. In other jurisdictions they have two-wheel drive versions. They're only doing the all-wheel drive version here which is called e-force, spelt with a four so that would be e 4 ors Anyway, notwithstanding the fact that Nissan can't spell, the boot 575 litres and that's only 10 litres less than the internal combustion version. I think the packaging is astounding and it's because they've put the batteries under the front seat and the electric motors are quite tiny. The back is actually really dark. I'm looking straight over the top of the headrest straight out the windscreen. There's plenty of space and even with the sunroof I've still got tons of headroom. The seat backs are adjustable. There's this beautiful quilted fabric. A third zone of air conditioning. Two, not one, but two USBs, a USB and a USB-C. But look how much leg space there is. Remember, when you turn the engine off and open the driver's door, this will slide back. It's a feature you can turn off, but the people in the back kind of need to be aware of that. And underneath the front seats, that's where the batteries are. This is ingenious packaging. I really like this a lot. And inside, the X-Trail is identical, identical in every way to the internal combustion version. Digital driver screen, digital centre screen, digital rear view mirror, and a digital widescreen head up display. Wireless charger, and the wireless Apple CarPlay, and wired Android Auto, still the same. Still the same electronic gear shifter. The only thing that you notice is when you press start, nothing happens. Not a sausage. And coming off another Bradfield creation, the Story Bridge, can you hear how quiet this car is? And that's part of the charm of an electric car. Just turn that air conditioning down a bit because it was on non schwetz which I'm actually fond of non schwetz It's a very easy, very family oriented car. The advantage of this electrified drivetrain means that the engine is now off. Now I'm just going to scroll up and over to, now I can see on my screen here, on my graphic, that the engine is now charging the battery and the wheels are also charging the battery. I put my foot down, now the battery is driving the front wheels and it's driving the back wheels. Now it's driving just the front wheels. It's genius. So in that sense, it's exactly like an electric car. But the party trick for this is that the 1.6 three-cylinder engine, it's positively puny, will kick in if the battery needs help. Now it doesn't put that charge through the battery, it puts it through the inverter and then to the wheels. 
via the reduction gear. It is genius. And that's why it is better than the opposition. Now you take a RAV4 for example, its E or wheel drive system has a tiny, almost insignificant electric motor on the back wheels. This one has 100 kilowatts worth. Not only that, it can change from front to back and side to side in one ten thousandth of a second, far faster than what a conventional all wheel drive car will do. So where's the disadvantage? You might ask, is 6.1 litres per 100 kilometres, is that such a gain for the extra money? The critics will cite the opposition, RAV4, that it's rated at 4.8 or thereabouts. So we asked Nissan that question last night and Nissan said, well, have you tested the RAV4? I said, yeah. So did you get 4.8? No. That's all. Well, there's your answer. You drove all those back roads of the Sunshine Coast hinterland, and what was your fuel consumption? I said, oh, I don't know, 6.2, 6.3? So there you go. So the moral of the story is you can't always go by official figures. And every time we quote one, we say these are our figures and these are their figures. And this one is pretty close to being the real deal. And around town, I think, is where this is going to do most of its work. So at that, it is going to have to be pretty good. The steering, very, very light. And I noticed in those corners, the handling was fantastic. We went over some just appalling, rutted, dirt roads. And yes, there was a bit of a skippity doodah happening, but all in all, it handled it with grace and poise. We've got McPherson struts at the front and multi-links at the back. It's sophisticated and it feels it, and generally the ride is excellent. Then there's one more thing, one last thing that makes this superior to others in the class, in my opinion, and that is it's got active noise cancelling. There's a speaker in the back, a subwoofer, that plays the opposite sine wave from the engine, so it cancels out the engine noise. And as this spins, you might say, what happens when the battery gets full? Well, yes, the battery does get full. It, the battery does get full indeed. And when it does, this little diagram will show nothing. No power is going anywhere. But what's actually happening is the regenerative braking that you're using going down that hill that can't go to the battery or be used for drive goes into the engine, but no petrol. So the engine effectively soaks up the wasted energy. It doesn't do anything with it, but it soaks it up. Then when you're ready to go, the battery now is half full, the battery will take over. So you could theoretically, if you were to press the EV button, according to Nissan, get around, they haven't tested it here, but get around three miles. Now, that's coming from Adam Patterson, who's a Canadian. I think he can still be considered to be speaking English, so he probably meant kilometres. Who knows? And the last advantage of the fact that this is just an X-Trail TIL with an electrified drivetrain is that it's got the same driver and safety aids as the rest of the range. All it is is another 250 odd kilograms heavier, which is quite a whack, and that accounts for the two electric motors and the battery pack. So is it worth the money? That's a burning question that only a buyer can answer. But what I can tell you is that it gives you the electrified experience without that awful elastic band feeling of a CVT. You know, that transmission that I hate with every fibre of my soul. So the electric feeling is what you're going for and it's aimed at those people not quite ready to make that full leap into an electric car. You don't have to tether this to some poor unsuspecting PowerPoint. You don't have to worry about the charging point not being active or being busy or not working at all. You can just get in, fill the car and go. So until they make burning bits of dinosaur illegal, this is okay by me. That is all for the electrified Nissan X-Trail, which I've decided to call the Nissan Petrol Electric. As always, hit like, leave a comment, and 
there to subscribe.